So we've been talking about electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions and using benzene, the archetypal aromatic compound, as our substrate. Reactions like this one between benzene and bromine, catalyzed by a Lewis acid such as ferric bromide, to form bromobenzene. But what if there's already a substituent, i.e. some other group, on the aromatic ring? Well, not surprisingly, this makes things more complicated. Let's look at the example of phenol, hydroxybenzene. Now, when phenol reacts in an electrophilic substitution reaction with bromine, you'll notice two things. First, the reaction doesn't need the catalyst. Phenol and bromine react just fine without need of the Lewis acid. And secondly, we get substitution more than once but only three times, and in these three positions every time. Remember we use the descriptors ortho, meta, and para to describe these positions on an aromatic ring, so this is the ortho, para, substituted product. But why does phenol react this way? Well, there are two effects at play here. First, let's look at what makes phenol more reactive to electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions than benzene itself. The answer to this is the ability of the hydroxyl group to donate electron density via resonance, as shown here. Since electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions require that the aromatic ring provides electrons, i.e. reacts as a nucleophile, then a group which pushes electron density into the ring, that is an electron donating group, like the hydroxy group here, will speed the reaction up. This makes the OH group what we call activating in that it increases reactivity relative to benzene. Other groups do this too, notably the NH2 group of aniline and alkyl groups like the CH3 of toluene. Aniline could donate electrons by resonance, like the OH in phenol. With toluene, it's a more subtle effect involving hyperconjugation and inductive effects. But both the amino and methyl groups are electron donating and activating. Now what about the position of the substitution? Why does the bromine only go to the ortho and para positions in phenol? To answer this half of the question, we need to look at some resonance structures for the different carbocation intermediates that would form if we substitute at different positions around the ring. Before we do that, Let's remind ourselves of the general mechanism for an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Remember that it starts with a slow addition step to give a resonance stabilized carbocation intermediate called the Wieland intermediate. The positive charge is stabilized by delocalization around the ring. Then rapid loss of a proton regenerates the aromatic system and gives us what is overall a substituted product. Now, if we consider bromination at the ortho position of phenol, then the resonance stabilized Wieland intermediate that forms looks like this. The charge can be spread around the ring by delocalizing those pi electrons. And importantly, the oxygen of the hydroxyl group can become involved in the resonance, i.e. it's possible to spread the charge out onto that oxygen as well as around the ring. This increases the stability of the intermediate and applying Hammond's postulate the transition state leading to this intermediate. A similar situation arises if bromination occurs at the para position. The OH can also become involved in resonance stabilization here, and the charge is further spread. So this intermediate also is more stable. But if we brominate meta to the OH, while there is still resonance stabilization of the carbocation, there's no way to involve that oxygen and the electrons on it in stabilizing the intermediate. So reaction at the meta position proceeds via a higher energy intermediate. Looking at a reaction profile diagram, this means that we have a lower energy pathway to the ortho and para substituted products, i.e. lower activation energies for reaction at those positions than we do at the meta position. If you think about this explanation, you see that we're actually using Hammond's postulate here by extrapolating from the stability of the intermediates 
to draw conclusions about the transition states leading to those intermediates, and therefore the relative rate of the different possible reactions. This means that with phenol and aniline and toluene, we get a faster reaction than with benzene, so they are activating, and we see substitution exclusively at the 2, 4, and 6 positions. As a result, we call groups like the OH and phenol, or the NH2 and aniline, activating and also paradirecting. But that's not all. If electron donating groups have this effect, what do you think an electron withdrawing group, such as a nitro or acyl group, will do, both to the reactivity and the position of electrophilic attack? Well, since electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions require the aromatic ring to provide electrons in behaving as a nucleophile, then a group which pulls electron density away from the ring will slow this reaction down. Consider this potential resonance effect in nitrobenzene, and note that it's pulling electron density out of the ring. Similarly, with an acyl group, we can envisage a resonance canonical of this type. So the nitro and acyl groups, and others like them, are electron withdrawing groups due to resonance effects, and we call these deactivating because they slow down the reaction relative to that of benzene itself. These groups also have the opposite directing effects to electron donating groups, in that the meta-substituted product is formed in preference to ortho- or para-isomers. Have a look at these different resonance possibilities for the bromination of nitrobenzene at an ortho position. Brominating at this position will force positive charge density onto the carbon immediately next door to the electron withdrawing group. This is not a desirable situation. The same adverse circumstance will also arise if we substitute at the para position. But if the incoming electrophile attaches to C3, the meta position, then that positive charge stays away from the electron withdrawing group, which is preferred and thereby a lower energy pathway. Mapping this to an energy profile diagram again and thinking about Hammond's postulate, this means that groups like nitro and acyl groups, as well as being deactivating, are also metadirecting, in that formation of the meta product is energetically favorable over the para and ortho pathways. There is one last set of substituents for us to consider halogen substituents, as in chlorobenzene and bromobenzene. Now, chlorine and bromine are, of course, more electronegative than carbon, so they are inductively electron withdrawing. That is to say, they pull electron density away from the aromatic system through the carbon-chlorine or carbon-bromine bond. This means they are deactivating. They slow the rate of electrophilic aromatic substitution relative to benzene itself. However, if electrophilic attack does occur, which it can do if enough energy is put into the system, then resonance effects come into play. Once there is a positive charge in the ring to be stabilized, then a chloro or bromo substituent can and will donate one of its lone pairs via resonance, as shown here. This means that substitution at an ortho or para position offers a lower energy pathway than meta substitution for the same reasons as, as we saw with the OH or NH2 groups in phenol and aniline earlier. So halogen substituents are deactivating due to inductive effects, but also paradirecting as a result of resonance. Overall, this gives us three types of substituent. Electron donating groups like the OH, NH2 and CH3, which are activating and also paradirecting. Electron withdrawing groups, like the nitro and acyl groups, and others besides, which are deactivating and metadirecting. And halogen substituents, chloro, bromo, iodo, which are deactivating due to inductive effects, but also paradirecting as a result of resonance. Overall, this gives quite a variation in reaction rates. The numbers shown here are the relative reaction rates for a nitration reaction. You can see that phenol is 1,000 times faster than benzene in this reaction, which is itself many orders of magnitude faster than nitrobenzene. We'll build on these ideas in class this week, 
In the meantime, you can read more in Clayton, Greaves and Warren, chapter 21 of the second edition, or chapter 22 of the first, or in McMurray, where chapters 15 and 16 of the seventh edition focus on this sort of chemistry.